I, I work for a company called Common 100 Network Corporation, and we're based in Vancouver, British Columbia, and we do software for small business contact centers. So think of it as all the digital channels that, that small businesses need to use to connect with their customers. We offer them that conduit, and we give them a very fun, easy, simple console that lets them manage all those conversations in one place. And as you mentioned AI, it used to be the domain of IBM Watson and Alexa and all these big, powerful LLP engines. It seemed so out of reach for the average business, and that's just not the case anymore. AI has rapidly been democratized. There's so many companies developing AI technology. It's so accessible, and now the challenge is, is to demonstrate to small businesses not only how easy it is to get into, but actually what it can do for them, right? right. It's, there's a lot of buzzwords, a lot of talk about that, but the, the results are tangible and I'm excited to share some stories with you what we're doing with our customers in that domain. So we have one basic criterion, which is if you have a business that has customers, we're good for you. So <laughs> it doesn't matter what vertical you're in, you might be in, you know, you might sell uh, handmade crafts for pets or you might sell online storage services, you might be just a general e-commerce, you know, local or regional player. If you have people you're dealing with online or through digital channels, then you need a platform that makes that simple and easy to do. So it really doesn't matter what, what the nature of your business is. It could be education, it could be e-commerce. Like I said, we even work with a lot of state and local governments around North America. So it, it scales. So there's, there's two real, uh, I guess, stories that we tell small businesses that are thinking about it. First of all, by mere fact of us having a conversation, they're recognizing that, oh, I have a bit of trouble here. I'm getting lots of emails or phone calls or questions on my website, and I, I just don't feel like I'm on top of that. I don't feel like I'm really giving my customers the service that they're expecting. Mm -hmm. And the harsh reality is... You might run uh, you know, a doggy daycare service in your local town, but your customers, they're comparing the service you give to the service they're getting off Amazon or Walmart or Canadian Tire, as the case may be up here in the north. And so while, it, while they recognize that you're a small business, they've been conditioned and they expect tier one technology, tier one customer service. And it's hard typically for small businesses to get over that hump, right? So mm -hmm. what do we do? Well, we're going to give you the tools that let you capture those conversations. Maybe it's a tweet that's sent to you. Maybe it's a post on your Facebook page. Maybe it's an email you're getting or somebody's trying to chat with you on your website saying, hey, you know, do you have any availability today? I have a last minute. Uh, you know, I got to drop my pet off real quick because I have a doctor's appointment that I forgot about. And they, have, they need a quick answer, right? They need that quick response and they need, they need a personalized answer. And that's the platform that we give our businesses so that they can now compete with these more sophisticated, larger businesses that have, now they've done the dirty work for you. So all these big businesses and they've funded companies like ours to develop tech technology because you know, we sell big multi, you know, six digit figure contracts. Mm -hmm. But hey, you know, we're, we're democratic here. We want everybody to benefit from it. Right. So we're bringing that technology that's been proven in the, in the enterprise down to the, the small business level. Say, hey, you don't have to settle anymore. You can now take advantage of the tools that the big guys use to deliver the service your customers are expecting. So it does sound complicated, right? Because you know that you have a login for Facebook and maybe you have mm -hmm. an Instagram account and sure, everybody has email and they, maybe they do it on their phone or they use Outlook and they all seem like they're kind of siloed information channels. Mm -hmm. Well, what we do is we give you either a web-based or even a mobile app interface that lets you connect all your accounts on those different channels. Wow. So now you can get those conversations all flowing into one place. So you only have to log in to COM100 and okay. you can respond to tweets. You can answer people on Facebook, whether that's posts or messenger. You could obviously take chats on your website or in your mobile app if you have one. And you could even uh, manage your email. So if you have a customer service email account or an info at type account, well, that'll flow into COM100 and you can manage all those emails and respond right from there. So you don't need Outlook anymore. You don't need to log into Twitter directly. You can do it all from COM100. All right, so let, let's paint a picture for, for the small business operator. So let's use doggy daycare as an example. I don't know where I came up with that one, but we'll just use that one. <laughs> <laughs> so you wake up in the morning and you open up your shop and you fire up you know, your email and all that. And uh, Rohan, Rohan, to address your question, you want to think of COM100 as your customer service platform. So it's not your broadcast to the world, communicate what I'm doing today within my doggy daycare. Hey, we got a special for Dalmatians today. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's 
thing, but maybe it is. Um, it's, it's not about broadcasting from a marketing perspective. It's about customer service. Mm -hmm. So, so next level is going to get inquiries by email or by Twitter, or he's going to get his doggy daycare center mentioned by a happy customer or maybe an unhappy customer, but I doubt that they're going to mention, they're going to, you know, mention his, you know, at, at next level daycare. And he's going to see that come in to come 100 and either it's a question about a service or it's a, or he's being mentioned uh, casually and he can now reply back to that person. Yeah. So he wouldn't, you wouldn't go into come 100 and set up like, like a Hootsuite, for example, where you, you program your outbound tweets and your marketing messages and the comments you want to make. Think of it as you're listening to the Twitter sphere and email and the web for people talking about your business, either directly or indirectly. And now you're able to respond to them. And when you're a small business, you know, you, you don't have time to, to do all that. You don't have time to log in and, you know, oh, I got to go log in over here and do my tweets and log in over here and answer my emails. What if you can do it when you're, you know, you just finished a meeting off site with a new supplier and you jump into your car and you, you take out your mobile app and you go, oh, I got a live chat here. I got to talk to a customer. Or oh, somebody just sent me an email asking about a refund or status of a delivery. Yeah, I can answer that right here from my mobile app, right? So now you're on the go. Wherever it is you're doing business, you don't have to stop. You don't have to change, sit down and think about, okay, now I got to think about, I got to put my customer service hat on uh, and log into my customer service platform. It's all there for you waiting. So there's, there's two things that you can do with AI when it comes to delivering that service and managing all the inbound. One is you can automate the responses, right? So you can connect a bot to your Twitter feed, to your website, and you can have the bot take those inquiries and respond based on how you've programmed that bot, how it's reading the questions, and how you're connecting it to the sources of information that you need to resolve those questions. So that level of automation, that's real, guys, and you know that. Hopefully everybody mm -hmm. listening also knows that. we've Most people, most consumers, I think Forrester last year in December said that about 65% of consumers have interacted at least once with the chatbot. So everybody knows what it is. And really underneath it all, the business owners are probably more reluctant than the consumers are to actually take advantage of that. Why? The consumers just want an answer to their question. Yeah. They don't really care where it comes from. If it's a bot and the bot gives them the answer they're hoping for, great. They can get on with their day and they're happy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that level of automation is, is if, to say it's within reach is, is a gross overstatement of the complexity. It is here. It is now. And what we saw in the last 12 to 18 months with COVID actually was a rapid, um, a rapidly increasing pace of adoption because the conditions were ripe for vendors, for the, for the supply side to like be pushed into that automation market. They were reluctant because they didn't think their customers wanted it, but COVID and the pandemic proved otherwise because people had urgent questions and just needed an answer. So we have customers like, for example, the state of Texas who when COVID hit and they closed down, this is the Office of Attorney General for the state of Texas, COVID hit, they had to close down their operations. All their agents, they had to move off the phone because their phone system couldn't work from home. It was a legacy on-premise phone system. Uh -huh. So they fired up an extra 100 licenses of COM100. They moved all their agents over to live chat and they didn't miss a beat. And now their, their, their customers had to get used to going to the website. Instead of hitting phone, they hit chat, right? So very easy transition for customers. And they didn't miss a beat. And, and that was a huge part. And as they rolled that out, they then learned, well, you know, I think about 40 or 50% of these questions I can automate with the bot because it's really not worth an agent's time 100%. to answer the same question over and over again, right? Yeah. So let me fire up a chat bot to field those questions. And voila, I've shortened my cues. I've gotten people answers, made people happy, and away they go. Right. And so that's one level of automation. The other level of automation, let's not forget the agents. So the people taking the chats, mm -hmm. well, they need help too, right? They need, they might not be masters of every technical aspect of the product or service. So imagine some technology like, like Alexa, if you will, kind of listening into their conversations with customers. And then, oh, this customer is talking about availability for daycare next week. Let me pull up the schedule. Here's what you have available next week. So now, the, the, the technology, the AI technology is now helping the agent find the answers more quickly than they can themselves. So they will pick up on keywords or key phrases in those messages 
and they'll they'll in, in a blink of an eye they'll scan their 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 internal database and go, I have an answer to that one. You know, I've seen this question a hundred times. I know what the answer is. High confidence answer, and away it goes.